Smith and Northwest City Politics and then Owen with Juanita. We're glad that you're joining us this evening for our show. We're always happy for people like you, people that are interested in the issues that are happening in the cities and CX, CCX's viewing area. It is important for good government that there be a good flow of ideas and information back and forth between city council members, between the city council and the mayor and the city staff, but also with you, the residents. So we're glad that you're interested. If you haven't watched our program before, each week we have somebody on from one of the nine cities in CCX's viewing area to in, get, bring us up to date on what's been happening and what's going to be happening in the future so you'll know about it. And right now we are in the middle of election season. So we have been having candidates on from eight of the nine cities that are all running for election for either city council or for mayor. And we're hoping that you'll catch your city council mayor or mayor person and help that inform you on who you should vote for. Now, tonight we've got people from a number of cities and we'll put up their email, their, their phone number, and we ask you to take it down for your city. So I know that they would be happy to answer questions and be in touch with you. Now, I'm happy tonight to introduce Andre Skolnikov. Yes. Is that okay? Yes. <laughs> good, good. Thank you. Who is from Plymouth? Mike Elliott from Brooklyn Center. Center, and Hollis Winston from Brooklyn Park, and there, all three of these gentlemen are running for mayor, and we also have Jim Prom, who's running for city council from Plymouth. So we're glad to have all of you with us tonight, and give our audience out there an idea of what are some of the issues and things that are going on, and a little bit about yourself. Now we'll start with Andre, and I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself out to our wider audience, particularly the people in Plymouth, so that they can get an idea of issues and things that are important and what your background is like. We'll start out with a kind of a little bit about you and your background in the city and kind of what prepares you to run for city council, for mayor. Okay, thank you for introduction. I am first generation immigrant and proud citizen of USA. For the wow. past seven years, I called uh, Plymouth my home. I <coughs> love this community and city, and I hope to put my skills in uh, business and management <coughs> to run the city even better. Ah. For the past few decades, I was involved in um, technology development, <coughs> and overall systems integration for multiple Fortune 500 companies, including Case and John Deere. <coughs> I also have my own business where I consult governments and huge firms in organizing uh, multiple agriculture systems. <coughs> I have four advanced degrees in business and engineering which give me a deep technical knowledge and broad range of skills which oh, yeah. again I would love to apply for our city. On a personal note, I am happily married for 42 years. Uh -huh. We have two children and six grandchildren. Uh -huh. Major issues which I'm going to address are <coughs> safety, education, and better usage of available resources. Um, for this matter, I'm going to, or would suggest to organize a integrated emergency center for our city, optimize all processes, and uh, develop uh, educational programs with uh, internal city businesses via internship and apprenticeship. <coughs> Do I need to say why I'm a good candidate? Or? Sure, yeah. yeah okay. Tell people why you're <laughs> Well, why like I mentioned, I have four advanced <coughs> degrees. I have a wide experience in the old city management issues, ah. hands-on experience. 
It's starting from fleet management to product development and overall system integration. So you, so you see some things about Plymouth that could be improved in that particular area, right? Yes, yes. Like I mentioned already, like optimization of all processes and better usage of financial resources uh -huh. for bigger impact because we can optimize and I did it several times, you know, like uh, uh, all our processes and find the places where city investment will have a better impact on a city and like I said, not only processes but uh, route optimizations for all equipment, for instance, you know, uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, the cities have a lot of equipment they have <laughs> to keep track of, right? Yes, yes. And uh, I lived for 30 years in a big city, Minsk, uh -huh. where I'm from. It's uh, almost two million oh. citizens. And yeah. I live in a, you know, high rise apartments, use all kind of public transportation. So I have experience with the city of all you know, sizes and I can contribute in this area as well. Is there, and, oh, is there another area that you'd like to talk about too? Well, uh, I think these are major issues for us and right. on top of that I'm creative and innovative person. I have 33 patents and we need to create more innovative programs for our city you know oh, implementing yeah. internet of things and we can work with the companies located in in our city to have kind of like a pilot programs in which they can build oh, and sure. i think we can do it uh, cheaper you know for city and for better benefits of our residents oh right people would enjoy that now Give you a little time to tell the people out there in Plymouth when they go into that voting booth on November 6th, why should they put a check by your name and elect you? Well, like I said, I, I have necessary experience, you know, like, uh, education, uh, character and capacity to manage. I started my career managing 126 ah. people in a big farm operation and, uh, you know, like I have uh, all necessary knowledge and will to do it right. even better. Ah, sounds good. Okay, now we'll move <coughs> on to Mike Elliott, who is also running for mayor in Brooklyn, in Brooklyn Center. Mm -hmm. And I'll let you introduce yourself out to yeah. our wider audience, but focus on Brooklyn Center people, right? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me here. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Um, you know, First of all, hello, hola, nojong, sawadi. Uh, you know, uh, folks in Brooklyn Center, we come from all over the world. Right. And right. you know, some of us were born here, grew up uh -huh. here. Others uh, uh, came from afar. Uh -huh. But you know, one thing we all share in common is uh, we all want a better life for ourselves and right. and for our families. Right. And that is why I'm running. Uh, to help fulfill that promise. Uh -huh. And so personally, you know, I grew up, you know, in Brooklyn Center uh -huh. uh, and I've been a member, an active member of the community for over 20 years now. I went to Palmer Lake Elementary and then graduated from Brooklyn Center High School. Uh -huh. And I've been involved with our local Rotary and Lions Club uh -huh. over the years. And, um, and I love our city. Um, after graduating high school, I went to Hamlin University and earned a degree in uh, international management and political science. Uh, came back and started working with the city. Uh -huh. And uh, I, uh, I've served on the board of SEEP. Okay. And I currently serve on our city's uh, charter commission. Ah. Yeah. And for 12 years, I worked in Brooklyn Center High School with students who were having a difficult oh. time, really trying to uh, help them succeed. Right. And we saw kids go from F averages to B and A averages within one semester. Um, and so, you know, over the last 10 years, I've been a, a, a small business owner. Uh, I'm a software engineer. Okay. And so I write software for, for packages for other companies. Ah. Yeah. 
So you have a long-term experience with Brooklyn Center. Absolutely. From different viewpoints at different ages. Absolutely. I've delivered now, meals on wheels. Uh -huh. <laughs> and now, some of the issues that you think are important, why don't you fill us in on one of them? Yeah, absolutely. So um, over the last uh, uh, 12, 15 years, we've seen our city take a turn for the worse. Ah. Uh -huh. Yes, we have many empty lots. We've Ooh. got lots of businesses that have closed. Uh -huh. uh, we've lost Sears, we've lost Kohl's, uh, and of course we lost uh, Brookdale Mall, under, right. all under the current leadership. Uh -huh. uh, and one thing that I hear over and over from residents is that door knock is, uh -huh. it's time for change. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's time for a new direction. Uh -huh. And because we've continued to lose business after business, the city has to maintain its budget, and yeah. as a result, mm -hmm. they have been raising taxes on homeowners. Uh -huh. And we have the highest uh, taxes uh, in, in the metro, oh. but yet um, our property values don't align with, uh. with our rate of, of, with our tax rates. Right. So this is a real burden for, for our residents. What we need to do now is we need a mayor that's going to be active, uh -huh. that's going to be proactive. Right now we have a very reactive uh, mayor, uh, kind of sit back and wait attitude. Uh -huh. We can't do that. We're competing for businesses. We're competing for jobs. We're competing with, with our friends over <laughs> in Brooklyn Park right, and Maple right. Grove and, and, and elsewhere. And the only way to do it is to elect a mayor, and this is what I propose to do, okay. that's going to pick up the phone and make phone calls. It's going to knock on doors of businesses and really work over time to get those businesses to come into our city. Uh -huh. You know, Folks tell me that they're having to leave the city to go to Maple Grove and, and other surrounding areas if they want to have a nice sit-down meal. Uh -huh. And that shouldn't be the case. You know, too, too many people have told me that. Right. Uh, for us not to have a, a nice uh, restaurant for them to be able to go to. We all remember what we had before. We had Chuck Wagon, uh, we had Cracker Barrel, uh, we mm -hmm. had Perkins, right. we had uh, Chi Chi's. We had lots of restaurant options, and uh -huh. now all we have is fast food in our city. That's not sustainable. Uh -huh. And so folks are having to leave the city for food and entertainment. We haven't got a movie theater. Um, uh, folks are also having to leave the city to go shop. Many leave the city uh -huh. to go grocery uh, shopping. And so it's a real problem because it means that folks are taking their, their dollars and spending it elsewhere. True. Um, and it furthers uh, the problem. So um, this is what I'm committed to doing, to turning this around uh -huh. in, you know, in a new direction. Another issue other than that? Oh, no, I'm going to stop at that because I want to give you enough time to tell people why they should check your name yeah. on November 6th for yeah. mayor, mayor of Brooklyn Center. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, residents of Brooklyn Center, it's time for a new direction. It's time for us as residents to rise up as one uh, voter called me the other day and said, we need an army of residents that's going to rise up and take back our city. It's time for us to uh, have an approach that is community-based. It's time for all of us to be united as one city um, and really put away, put aside the, the things that divide us and focus on the things that unite us, which is, you know, we all want a brighter future for ourselves and our, and our, and our kids. And what has been happening uh, is no longer sustainable. I want to be your mayor. I want to be mayor for everybody, for all of Brooklyn Center. And so I ask that when you cast your vote, you vote for me uh, on uh, Tuesday, November 6th, but don't wait. Uh, do early voting, which is uh -huh. happening right now. You can go to City Hall. Right. Thank you. And I will fight for you. Thank you very much. Now we'll move on to Hollis Winston, who's running for mayor in Brooklyn Park. That's right. And we're going to win that competition, by the way, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see you about that. that. It's friendly competition. Friendly competition. Friendly competition. Friendly competition. Friendly competition. I like that. I like yes. that. Yes. I will All let right. you introduce yourself to our wider audience, All but right. focus in on Brooklyn Park. So, um, yeah, so Brooklyn Park, not Brooklyn Center. We're like right. roughly twice the size <laughs> right. of Brooklyn Center. No, but, um, <laughs> but I will say, um, you know, I, I always like to start with my, uh, my family, extremely mm -hmm. important to me. So I have, um, you know, I have a uh, beautiful wife, uh, Latrice Winston, and I have three um, 
wonderful children. So my oldest is 14, um, my middle child is 13, and then my youngest is two and a half, but I think she thinks she's the oldest one. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's really my base and my foundation. As far as education, uh, I went to Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois. Uh, I received my, uh, then from there I went, started a business, um, and eventually went, got into corporate America, went back to Carlson, got an MBA where I was class president. And then from there, I've been um, in project management uh, slash implementation management um, at various Fortune 500 companies oh. uh, around the Twin Cities. Um, uh, during that time, I've also uh, worked at the, uh, well, I'm currently sitting on the Budget Advisory Commission for Brooklyn Park, uh, sat on the um, Heritage Park YMCA board, um, and then also chaired um, African American DFL Caucus, where we started a youth mentor program, mm -hmm. where we take youth, uh, match them up with a, um, mentor and uh -huh. then we go out and we door knock or we canvas um, or we just teach the kids how to become civically engaged and from right. that we've actually placed a number of kids with um, senators so that uh, they kind of learn a lot more about how our government wow. works. So uh, civic engagement is extremely important to me. Um, so as far as um, Brooklyn Park, I think we have some of the same similar issues as Brooklyn Center. Sure. I think, um, you know, I'd like to start with property taxes. Being on the Budget Advisory Commission, I think numbers are extremely important. Okay. One number we've seen is that over the last seven years, which is the tenure um, of our current mayor, uh -huh. um, and I always like to let, tell folks I'm proud, um, I'm the proud Democrat DFL endorsed candidate for Brooklyn Park. Okay. Um, current mayor has kind of subscribe to Republican ideals uh -huh. and has been Republican for quite some time. And we see that in a lot of what's happening in Brooklyn okay. Park. So if we look at property taxes, they've risen 30% over the last seven years. And a lot of that is because over, since Target, so we made a deal with Target. Since the Target deal, we've probably, we've gotten around 11.8 or $12 million in tax breaks to big corporations along 610. Oh. And so we have not done a good job of bringing in businesses that are willing to pay their fair share of taxes, right. and we haven't really supported local businesses that will pay their fair share of taxes. Right. So then that falls on the, the shoulders of property tax owners, which right. is why it's gone up 30%, but it also falls on the shoulders of renters. So I like to let people know that oh, well, sure. you know, if, if your property taxes are going up, well, uh, rent, the, the people who own those rental properties are gonna pass that along to renters. Right. So it's creating a real affordable housing issue but it's creating a livability issue. Uh -huh. So if you're talking about um, seniors, if you're talking about folks who are trying to start a new family, it creates an issue. So for me, it's a real solution. Um, similar to what Mike is saying, you know, I also own a, a business on the side. Right. Um, and we need, to, we need to be much more creative in terms of finding businesses that will work in Brooklyn Park. So a lot of times we look to do the Maple Grove thing with big box retailers. Uh, right. And that doesn't necessarily work for a Brooklyn Park. Right. So we need to learn how to um, work with businesses that maybe a different size, have a different approach. We have a ton of diversity within Brooklyn Park. Sure. So we can invest in that and we can actually become the center where people visit. And we'll work with Brooklyn Center on this. <laughs> but we can become a center where people um, come and visit us because we've got high quality uh, restaurants of a diverse nature. Right. Right. Uh, and that can, that can help with the tax base along with bringing other different types mm -hmm. of businesses. But we have a real issue where we can't necessarily fully staff our fire department. Uh, the East District Fire Department is closed. Uh, we're cutting back on the number of cadets we hire at the police force. Uh -huh. And so if you're looking for a diverse police force, if you're looking for a, uh, a police force that interacts with the community, um, that's able to do community policing and get out, if you're cutting back on the force, um, you can't necessarily hire that diversity oh, in right. because you're not gonna get rid of tenured people because that's simply not fair. Um, and then lastly, a ton of people are extremely concerned about their kids' education. I think from oh, an immigrant right. perspective, right. Uh, pe uh, people of color perspective, mm -hmm. and then people whatever uh, ethnicity, or if you've been in uh, Brooklyn Park for 60 years, you know the importance of education in terms of moving up. Oh, in Brooklyn definitely. Park, uh, or in America, being able to provide for your family. A ton of people are concerned about their public schools. As mayor, we can't affect that. I couldn't affect that. But what I can tell you is that, you know, once we get our budget in order, we can scale out after school programs. Ah. And so, that helps fill some of those gaps so that kids are able to go to good schools or they can get involved with the trade program um, that gets them involved with the different trades or apprenticeships or something right. of that nature. So. Now, your chance to tell those people out in Brooklyn Park why they should vote for you November 6th. I thought I just did that one. Oh, well, no. you can give it <laughs> no, another I'm try. Just <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. But I really, I think it, it boils down to, um, you know, opportunity. So I was listening to someone talk about you know, how they see the parties, how they see Democrats versus Republicans. And I, and I don't think this is a line, but one of the reasons I really am proud of that endorsement is because 
it's not just about helping people. I think that's important, but I think it's also about providing opportunity. Uh, and so we're not looking for equality of outcome, but we are looking for equality of opportunity. Uh -huh. And so, you know, I was afforded a ton of opportunities as a kid, as a youth growing up, and I was able to take advantage of those and parlay that into a great education. We need to make sure that in a place like Brooklyn Park, whether it's a youth coming up, they have great educational opportunities. If we are going to give tax breaks, let's make sure those businesses are working with North Hennepin, Hennepin Tech, and the high schools to give youth opportunities. But then if you're 30, 35, and you lost your job, and you got to learn this new economy, right. why don't we work with some of these local uh, um, businesses that are getting mm -hmm. these tax breaks and say, let's help these people have the skills so that they can transition in this new economy. Um, so it's an opportunity for people really to live their best life. Okay, and I think that's you. what it's about. Thank you very much. Thanks. Got to give Jim a problem. <laughs> now, these three remember, remember these three gentlemen are running for mayor, but Jim is yeah. running for city council in Plymouth, or running for re-election. Yes, right. running again, Juanita. Thank you for having me back. I've served the residents of Ward 4 for five years now, the last of one mm -hmm. term and then a full another term as a council member ward four and this year i had the honor of being deputy mayor oh. so i ran the last meeting as mayor and i uh, truly enjoyed that there's been a lot of honors uh, uh -huh. uh, it's an honor to serve the people of ward four we've had quite a few great years in the city of plymouth uh, i'm originally from the area huh. just a little bit about myself i have a medical background i worked in ambulance the er cardiac cath labs I designed and manufactured, I started a business that make angioplasty mannequins oh. for hospitals to teach their doctors, angiogramsam.com, a little uh -huh. plug there. Still, still selling and manufacturing. Uh, I have a wife and three daughters, and uh, they're mostly grown. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Oh, I just started a new business called Armor Arts, huh. which is uh, providing uh, safety element for some of the school incidences oh. and that's armorarts.com uh -huh. not a commercial i've really enjoyed being a council member in ward four so some of the things that we've done over the past five years is we instituted the yellow flashing arrows which i oh, advocated right. for right. Uh, which allows us not to sit at the red arrow anymore some of the intersections were terrible you be mm -hmm. you know two three minutes you're sitting there with your yeah. car idling for no reason at all so that's mm -hmm. worked out pretty well uh, I'm the liaison to the Robbinsdale School District. Mm -hmm. There are two school districts in my ward, uh, and they're not Wyzetta. Uh -huh. They're Osseo and Robbinsdale. Uh -huh. So I'm the liaison to the Robbinsdale uh, governmental uh -huh. meetings, and I worked with Dr. Jenkins and uh, uh, the good folks over there to reopen Pilgrim Lane, right. which was an elementary right. school, and they reopened it. They've invested money, and they're reopening it as, a, as an elementary school which is why I'm supporting the levy for the Robsdale School District, because they are underfunded compared to other school districts. And they did right by Plymouth, and we should do right by uh -huh. them. <clears throat> now, some issues that are important to you that you'd like to share thoughts with our audience out there. Well, in my particular ward, there's one gorilla in the room, if you will, and that's the Four Seasons property. Oh, right, right. Uh, as I knock on doors, literally, I've been asked this question for five years now. <laughs> and the city of Plymouth, we've done everything we can. Yeah. We, uh, we had a developer come in. He was going to build a couple of hotels, some senior housing, a parking ramp, and we, we approved the public utility development and then his financing fell through. Oh. It even had a neat water feature, oh. which the Bassett Creek watershed also. Yeah. So we provided him the TIF money and the watershed was gonna give him money to make that development. We did everything we could and it still yeah. fell through. So it's kind of a lesson in the limits of what government can do. True, true. And we're looking for uh, more developers. If anyone knows any developers out there, we'd love to see something on there. Most of the council would, would approve a micro brew or uh, uh, some nice uh -huh. restaurants. <laughs> uh, I really like that top golf over there in Brooklyn Park Center. Center. Yeah. That's right. I went on Saturday. That would be cool, but they're only having one. So <laughs> yeah. unfortunately, that that is just going to sit the way it is. and. Um, the owner has dropped their price from 10.5 million that they bought it for down to 7.5 ah. so they mm -hmm. certainly taken a hit on that but there's a lot of water issues and so it really takes the right kind of developer right. so as the city we're waiting on that and that's one of the big issues in my ward oh, I can another see that. issue was the train whistle we have a lot of people that live along the train tracks oh, right. and 
that whistle uh, across my ward. We have three intersections, ah. Large, Pine View, and Zachary Lane. And in order for us to get a 24-hour ban, a whistle ban, we had to spend a million dollars, right. which I got the council to approve, and we are now actually doing the upgrades ah. to those four, uh, to those three streets. Right. And so once those upgrades are done, then we'll ask the uh, railroad authority for permission because uh -huh. they're their own government right. agency unto themselves. Right. But we've had a good relationship with them. And so uh -huh. hopefully next year we'll have a 24-hour ban. Uh -huh. And that will be good for the people who live there directly. It'll oh, help right. their home values, uh, maintain their home values, and give a lot of people a peace of mind because uh, it really is very loud. And right. so, uh, In the middle of the night especially. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have gotten that done. Uh -huh. There's a lot of people that have been waiting 10 or 20 years, quite frankly, for that to get done. So I'm glad that we... Uh, we spent the money uh -huh. and we're doing that. And uh, the other issues affecting my ward is the Rockford Road Bridge over 494. Uh -huh. I went and I lobbied uh, in the Senate last year and we got funding uh, to help build a right. new bridge, which will help the, the road, uh, basically the access. And uh, unfortunately, MnDOT kind of backed out on part of that. So we're mm -hmm. still kind of haggling uh -huh. and the city itself, again, is having to pony up uh -huh. a couple more million. Uh, Plymouth is a very well-run city. We have a AAA bonding from both Standard & Poor's and Moody's, and uh, our levies are some of the lowest ever. Now, part of that is because of the growth that's been going right. on, and that some of those permit revenues are going to dwindle over the next few years. So we have to really kind of watch our budget. Our city manager, Dave Callister, has done a remarkable job. So we have more employees coming into the city than actually people yeah. living there every day. We have the most medical device companies oh, of any city. True. We have the most manufacturing companies of any city in the state of Minnesota. Most people don't know that. No. And we're just a well-run city. And that's okay, why no, people gonna, are I'm, still coming in. I appreciate that, but yeah. I want to make sure you have enough time to tell people out there on November 6th, why should they check your name and vote for you? Well, Ward 4 uh, residents, I hope I served you well. You know that you've been a always able to contact me on my cell phone. Uh, it's on my card, and I always answer. I like to come out. If you ever want to have a coffee, I like meeting people, engaging with people, and solving problems. Plymouth is a complaint-based city, mm -hmm. and so if people don't complain, we assume things are working out pretty well. And by and large, they will, because Ward 4 is just filled with really great people. So I ask for your vote, and I'd like to serve you for four more years. And then we'll encourage those of you out there to be sure to gather information. You've got a few weeks left now, so gather information. Our candidates sharing their ideas gave you some thoughts, but go to your local newspaper, go to the, I'm sure you could re-look at the League of Women Voters debates, because I think they're mostly gone through. And even the Star Tribune has things available. So we'll ask you to take time and really think through who you're going to vote for. Thank you. Well, I want to thank all of you for taking time out of, I know what our busy schedules, mm -hmm. to share your thoughts and your experiences with our audience. Yeah. And we'll wish all of you good luck. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank Come you join us next Thanks for the opportunity. Bye.